This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Did you know that the brain controls and regulates the health of your entire body? This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Think about this. When the brain body's life force is blocked, physical symptoms begin. What if you knew how to prevent the deterioration of your brain body system, avoiding chronic pain, dementia, Parkinson's, MS, and immune dysfunction? Join me on Saturday, October 17th, and I will teach you how to restore normal brain body function. So what are you waiting for? Go to agelesshealth2015.com or call 703-698-7117. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live in studio, waiting to take your phone calls on any subject you have in mind. Perhaps you've had a problem, you've tried, you've applied, you've done the same old stuff that really doesn't work. So here's an opportunity. Let's see if we can look at it from a different platform of non-surgical, non-drug intervention. You know, those things about uh, traditional Chinese medicine and functional medicine and herbology and chiropractic and acupuncture, you know, all those things that really work, call me, 888 630 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. We have a topic today, but one that unfortunately affects way too many people and getting more so as time goes on, and it's one that... The symptoms that are associated with it, everything from what you might expect from diarrhea and bloating and abdominal pain, but also things like headache and foggy brain and fatigue and joint pain and numbness and, you know, things of that nature and the inability to uh, show any kind of resolution no matter what takes place. And then we can get into the, the problems of autoimmune dysfunction. But you know what? To help me talk about that... I have somebody very special in the studio today with me. My guest and your host and presenter this Wednesday night, the 30th of the month, the last day of the month, Dr. Matthew Adams. Dr. Matt, welcome again. Thank you. Thanks for making me feel special. Hey, listen, you are special. You know, you're one of the brightest and, you know, your mind, as we had, you know, conversation earlier, you know, I learn conceptually now. You know, I can I can put together facts stacked on other information that I have already stacked into this six inches between my earlobes, you have that young brain that can actually start memorizing and keep adding to that capacity. So I learned from you. Anyway, we're talking about a very interesting subject matter today, one that there's a lot of flags being, you know, shown on a a day-to-day basis all over the place. And some people say, yeah, it exists. Some people say, no, it doesn't. But the truth of it is, is that there's way too many suffering at what we're talking about. And the title of your program is called the Gluten, Gluten Challenge. And I, what that really means is, is not, you know, how do we, you know, the challenge of fixing it, but the challenge of really living in a world and understanding what gluten's all about and the different factors of gluten, the different types of gluten, and, you know, all the symptoms that I just talked about that are far-reaching and they actually they extend beyond that. So let's start with a real simple, simple question. You know, gluten is in everything. It's in wheats and oats and rye and barley and yada, 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 and things that we don't even know about. But here's the question, okay? Relative to gluten, what's the incidence? How many people do this affect? How many people does it affect? Yeah. I mean, you know, is it 3%? Is it all of us? Is it, what's the deal with this thing? Well, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a tough one they're trying to figure out because, um, I mean, they have an idea of people with celiac, and, and celiac is people who have a severe gluten allergy, um, and that's not even counting sensitivities. And, and they know that, uh, you know, back then, you know, this is like 60 years ago, it was, you know, it affect, uh, right now it affects like four times more people than it used to. So we know that the celiac rate is increasing. Um, the gluten sensitivity, though, is one they're having a hard time figure out exactly because it has so many different symptoms. And so I think that there it, it's tough for uh, researchers to identify, okay, you know, they're coming in. How do we, how do we even measure if it's a gluten sensitivity? Because like you said, you just went through 
and named a bunch of things. The over here, if I go to the Celiac Disease Foundation, they talk about um, gluten sensitivities, foggy mind, depression, ADHD, abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea. I mean, how do you how do you label those as gluten sensitivity when they could become well, that's really hard to... The challenge is that they, they're they not even focused on identified. In our practice, because you know we do brain, body, nervous system, autoimmune function, what affects those things structurally, chemically, emotionally. And so we look at this paradigm and we're, you know, we're looking at all the cutting edge information as it relates to the presentation of certain symptoms and syndromes. I mean, if you just took celiac disease, like a lot of physicians want to take and said, well, you know, gluten only causes celiac problems. Well, wrong. Yeah. And, and the incidence might be somewhere between two to three uh, percent of the population. And so when you look at that, well, you know, how big of a deal is that? The problem is, is that all these other things that profoundly cause problems from Hashimoto's thyroiditis to predispositions of cancers within the intestinal tract, liver dysfunction, autoimmune reactions, and so forth. So let's kind of take this thing apart. And I know you're going to uh, do this on uh, this Wednesday evening. Dr. Matt Adams, my guest today, will uh, present at the Result Center for Healing this Wednesday evening at 7.30. The topic is going to be the gluten challenge. And we want you to understand that so much of your inability to resolve problems can be due to this very specific situation. We eat way too many grains, and the grains that we have today are modified that they cause a detrimental situation. So, Dr. Matt, first of all, let's break this thing down. What is gluten? I mean, everybody you know, talks about gluten, and it's, you know, there's... There's gluten and there's gluten and there's gluten. What is gluten? Well, it's a protein in wheat. It's it uh it's what helps make your bread, um, kind of fluffy and chewy. It has that nice texture that everybody wants in their bread, and uh, that's that's basically what it is in your in your wheat products. Um, uh, the problem is nowadays is this protein has been genetically engineered to probably because it's genetically engineered to withstand all kinds of other things like pesticides that they're throwing at it and, and do things with the crops. So when it gets into the body, it, it's very difficult for your system to break it down. And uh, and so like other proteins, it can take care of it, turn it to amino acids, and your body absorbs it and uses the protein like it needs to. But unfortunately, gluten, uh, particularly the gluten nowadays, is very difficult for your body to break down. And so when things don't break down in the body and it gets transferred somewhere else, then your system's like, I don't know what this is. This isn't wheat. Okay, I don't so know. so that, yeah. that brings a question. Yeah. You're, you're making a statement that says gluten today is different than gluten. Your, uh, you know, your, your draw is that is it was very different than what it was 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 30 years ago. Why? Why? Well, we just mentioned the uh, genetically engineered or genetically modified. I mean, all of our, all of our wheat, we've we've played with the DNA. Uh, particularly here in the United States, to make um, wheat to be able to grow larger, bigger, withstand chemicals, and all these things. So we've changed it, and that's a big part of it. And that's happened over the last 50, 60 years. Uh, if you go look at other countries where they don't have the amount of genetically modified things, uh, they don't have as many of the gluten sensitivities like like we have here in the United States. Uh, the, the, the gluten incidence in this country is, is growing exponentially. In functional medicine, we know that there are a lot of conditions that are triggered because of this. I mentioned briefly that there's something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune reaction that more and more people in the healthcare community agree that is triggered from allergic reactions in the gut. Mm-hmm. And so we have this irritated gut, and now we have these inflammatory reactions. I'm going to ask you to explain those in a little bit. And what really is causing you know these situations? You said that we have exponentially more gluten. I, I think seven, some authors say anywhere from seven to ten times as much. And because of the modifications, they don't act the same way in the system. And they begin to tie up immune function. And so subsequently, we see all these symptoms that go don't go away. We're seeing you know more and more uh, kids with autistic types of syndromes, adults with learning disability patterns, and uh, where their brain isn't coordinating and functioning at the levels that it should. And so we have you know depressions, and we have 
hyperreactivities and we have all these things that seem to keep be suddenly coming from out of nowhere. And a lot of authors are finally saying, medical authors are finally saying that, hey, we got to take a look at the source and the quality and the type of foods that we're consuming. And one of it is going to gluten and its antibody reactions within the body. You and I talked about it a little bit on the way up today. And we were distinguishing that there are many different types of gluten. So when somebody goes to their doctor, for example, and they say, hey, you know, I have a, a gut problem. Well, let's see if you have celiac disease or Crohn's disease or whatever, and let's see if you're gluten sensitive. Well, they come back and say, well, Mrs. Jones, you don't. And they ran the gluten test. Walk us through that. Why Why do they come up with no? Well, um, if you're just tested for celiac, they're going to test uh, a, they call it a, a transglutamase antibody test, and they're really testing for an IgA antibody, and sometimes an IgE antibody. So these antibodies are the things that your body makes to attack and get rid of stuff that's not supposed to be there. So they're testing for those. Uh, And there's different parts to the gluten. There's um, gliadin and and glutenine, uh, if I'm saying that right. So they'll test one part of it, and then they'll test one of the antibodies uh, when there's multiple different antibodies that can be involved and there's different parts of the protein. So you're missing the the areas that may be reacting to that individual. There's a, what we call an IgG antibody that a lot of people don't test for some reason. I don't understand why. But a lot of times that can be positive. And the research that shows people with sensitivities, their IgG uh, reactivity was way up when their IgA can sometimes be down. And that's where I think the fallout is. They're just te- testing for celiac, and they're missing the sensitivity part. Um, and so that's where I think uh, it gets missed with some of the testing. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's how you find us here in the studio. But if you'd like to attend this Wednesday evening's presentation on gluten intolerance, gluten sensitivity, the gluten challenge, what to do about it, how do you fix it, what you know, are you really stuck with this? This craziness, you know, in all the problems that you're dealing with, you know, the way too fat syndrome, you can't get the weight off. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the program today and uh, the swelling and the brain fog and the inability to function and the hurt and I don't feel good and so forth. And, you know, you went out for dinner the night before you didn't even drink, but you had a, uh, a dish of spaghetti and you wake up the next morning like you were drunk. Uh, there's a lot to that. 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. That's how you register for this Wednesday's presentation on the Gluten Challenge with Dr. Matthew Adams. Call my office. Tell my staff that you'd like to be there because let me tell you something. If you've got stuff that's not going away, you want to know what to do about it. You, you know, you know you're having some neurological problems. You have, your doctors told you you have arthritis. You know, where did it come from? You're not that old. Uh, your brain's not working the way it's supposed to. Shoulders aren't uh, working. You're always in pain. This is an area that you really need to explore. Give us a call, 703-698-7117, and attend. It's free. It's, it's our gift to you. It's what we do for the community, give you more and more information so you can help yourself and tell you what your resources are. Dr. Matthew Adams will be your host, your presenter, on these different subjects, call. And if you'd like to check out more, go to rosellcare.com, and there's a lot of things coming up, and we want to let you know about those as well. I want to give you a little uh, kind of heads up. Uh, this afternoon, 1.30 p.m., at the Fairview Park Falls Church Hotel, there's this semi-annual uh, gathering. It's called Pathways, and it's a group of natural, everything that you can possibly think of, and then some. I'm going to be doing a presentation on the emotional side of healing. It's an hour presentation, so join me. You know, when the program is done, I'm flying out the door. I'm getting in my car. I'm going down there. I will be there. I'll run in the hotel, and I'm starting the presentation. Love to have you as my my guest. Shake hands. You know, say hello. Say, hey, listen, I listen to your program all the time, and let's talk about why the brain gets in the way, the mind gets in the way when you want to really jump into the journey of healing and make yourself better than one. this afternoon, 1.30 at the Fairview Park, Falls Church, Marriott Hotel. I'll see you there right after the program. We're coming up to a break. We're talking about the gluten challenge with Dr. Matthew Adams, and he's going to present that at the Roselle Center for Healing this Wednesday evening. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Did you know that the brain controls and regulates the health of your entire body? This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Think about this. When the brain body's life force is blocked, physical symptoms begin. What if you knew how to prevent the deterioration of your brain body system? Avoiding chronic pain, dementia, Parkinson's, MS, and immune dysfunction. Join me on Saturday, October 17th, and I will teach you how to restore normal brain body function. So what are you waiting for? Go to agelesshealth2015.com or call 703-698-7117. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. We're at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on any subject that you have in mind. We've got one today. We're talking about gluten sensitivity. I mean, it's like all over the place, right? I'm gluten this, I'm gluten that. you should got to stop eating gluten. So the bottom line is, is that the incidence of gluten sensitivity is exponentially on the rise. And we're talking about allergic reactions, sensitivity reactions, toxic reactions. They're different, Dr. Matt. Dr. Matt Adams in the studio today. He'll be your host, your presenter this Wednesday evening. And so as we get into that, Dr. Matt, let's talk about that. You know, we said gluten is a protein, and we alluded to the fact there are many different forms of it. And they only test for one when you go to your traditional doc. He's looking for something that's going to cause celiac. And if that's not there, he says, well, you don't have a problem with gluten. Well, the truth of it is, not so much, right? There's, you can be super sensitive. You can be allergic. You can be yada, yada, yada. Walk through that a little bit for us. Yeah, so, I mean, if if just because you do one test and it doesn't show up, I mean, a lot of times you have to have consumed it, a large amount of it, on a regular basis in order to challenge the body so the antibodies show up for the test. So if you haven't been eating as much lately or uh, or if you've had so much and your immune system's not working too well, then you're not going to produce those antibodies. So that's why you can't always rely on that. That's why they always they talk about doing an elimination diet where you take it out of your diet completely. I mean, you have to really be completely for a good portion of time, almost a month, and then reintroduce it and see how you feel. But but even then, um, it's just, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more with studies in science that the gluten is actually breaking down and damaging your intestinal tract. And if we talked about this a lot, anytime you break down the intestinal tract, it's going to cause inflammation. It's going to cause uh, leaky gut. We talked about leaky gut. And that, in, in, in turn, like you talked about having joint pain. I mean, you're going to get inflammation in the joints, too, because it's leaking through the intestinal tract. Or you're going to get inflammation in your nervous system, which is going to affect the brain. Or you're going to get um, more uh, problems with you know, your, your heart palpations or something like that because you have inflammation. Your body gets a sympathetic reaction, and now your adrenals kick in. And so now maybe you're, you start getting, uh, you know get hot real quick, little hot flash, or things like that from another allergic reaction. So there's all these different things that are taking place that we don't realize because we're eating gluten every single day with almost every meal in, in this country. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the truth. And, you know, we've, we've become fast food, junk food experts, and we want to grab a piece of toast, a sandwich, you know, something quick. We, we fry things in breads and gluten and so forth, and we preserve them in glutens, and that's another story. Join us this Wednesday evening. I think you're going to be impressed on how these things can just kind of permeate and infiltrate in your entire life. We're here at triple eight six three zero nine six two five, and how you register for Wednesday's class is seven zero three six nine eight seven one one seven. That's seven zero three six nine eight seven one one seven. Bernice, how you doing, kiddo? How's things in Arizona? Oh, it's uh, really nice today. Uh, the weather's probably maybe eighty five or so, eighty something. Hey, it's tolerable. Yeah, it's really nice. Very um, <laughs> tolerable. I have a question. I have a daughter who went back to school. She's in um, in pharmacy school. And uh, I wanted to find out um, what vitamins or one vitamin or two vitamins would be really good for her memory. 
<laughs> that you can't just do one or two. You have to find out what's if she's having a problem. You got to figure out what the impairment is. So, for example, if you know, just on the subject that we're on today, if she is uh, gluten sensitive and she continues to eat gluten, all the things from wheat and oats and bread and or, or uh, rye and barley and so forth, or things that have gluten in them, then it's going to cause inflammation, and that inflammatory reaction is going to cause the brain not to work the way it's supposed to. So, kind of as a broad brush, I mean, one, you got to eliminate that stuff if that's a sensitivity problem because the brain's not going to work the way it's supposed to. We know that you know learning problems and autism and and autistic-like syndromes and uh, come about because of that. However, having said that, high levels of omega-3 fatty acids, but animal-based uh, omega fatty acids, omega-3s, and DHA uh, work with brain to increase the neurological pathways, increasing memory. Vitamin B1, thiamine, uh, at least for college students when, th- when they're studying, 500 milligrams a day will also increase the neurological pathways and the ability for the, uh, the, the mind to stay sharp taurine which is an amino acid sleep uh, and sleep sleep she said yeah we've been there before yeah we, we both have been in that you know that juggernaut and yeah you got to get sleep if you don't you burn your brain out and you can't think and you can't remember and you know those those all-nighters that yeah, dr matt you and i used to pull yeah. from time to time eating on a regular basis i mean there's there's that's a tough one when it i'm thinking back at, in my college days uh trying to do memory i, I think a lot of it was sleep um, the eating habits. I mean, vitamins are going to are going to help, but there's so many other aspects that that's a tough question. And exercise to, on a yeah. regular basis. She's got to get out and she's got to exercise every day. Not necessarily a lot and not strenuously, but she's got to get some low level aerobic activity. She got to get a little meditation. If I had incorporated those things when I was going to school, things would be much better. Bernice, thanks for calling. We're coming up to a break. Give us a call here at triple eight six three zero nine six two five. You've been everywhere, you've done everything, and you still feel like, well, you know. Did you know that your health and wellness starts with your brain and nervous system? What if by establishing normal brain and nervous system function, you could regain your energy, strength, and vitality? Would you be interested? I'm Dr. Tom Rozelle, host of Dr. Tom Rozelle Live. Join me and an elite group of wellness practitioners for Ageless Health 2015 on October 17th at Fairview Park Marriott Hotel in Falls Church, Virginia for a day that could change your life forever. A day when you'll learn step-by-step how to create a brain-body connection that will allow you to live in a state of wellness that you deserve. Register today at agelesshealth2015.com. That's agelesshealth2015.com. Or call 703-698-7117. Register today. After all, your health is a do-it-yourself program. Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Roselle here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. We're in studio, 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625. That's the number that you call when you have a question on how to fix something without the drugs that you've been putting in your body. Is there another way? We'll give you an option. We'll give you our thought process, opinions, you know, as they may be. And but also to provoke you to do your own homework, your own research to find out what's true and what isn't. You know, we approach uh, everything that happens in our life physiologically relative to our expression of our wellness from a platform of neurology, from biochemistry and emotion. And we know that they all act in each other's support and sometimes degradation. So when you think about the topics that we're talking about, particularly today's topic, gluten sensitivity or the gluten challenge, if you will, the predispositions of these this uh, protein irritation in your body, I want you to start thinking globally. I want you to start thinking about the structural things that don't go away. I want you to start thinking about the autoimmune and biochemical pieces. I want you to think about the emotional stresses, the depression, the anxiety reactions, and even in some cases, you know, bipolar patterns, and that each one of these pathways act on each other. So in studio, Dr. Matthew Adams, your host, your presenter this Wednesday evening, the Gluten Challenge. We're going to get into it in a step-by-step, very informative way to allow you to really understand what needs to be done. Call the office at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And tell my staff that you'd like to be there. Again, it's our gift to you. It's our the way we give back to the community. 
Dr. Matt, let's talk a little bit more about the the challenge, if you will, of how gluten really affects everything. We know that we have, and we began to touch on it, the differences between a gluten allergy, a gluten toxicity, and a gluten sensitivity. How are they different? Because this is where they're missing the boat in traditional health care. They're not able to put their finger exactly on it. They test for one uh, of the cousins. Usually, you know, it's a gliadin uh, antibody, and they're looking for a toxic reaction to celiac disease or Crohn's or so forth, and it comes back negative, and they say, well, you don't have a problem. I just, I just think that we worry so much about uh, testing because there's some things that just – you, they don't have. We haven't developed the best way to test it right now. And I think you, gluten sensitivity. You can't really. It's tough to test for um, in a lab test. Uh, that's that's the problem. And to me, the bottom line is is that it's it's going to cause destruction in, in in the gut and the intestinal tract. And because of how important that is, um, you know, one of the pathways that it affects. We talked about brain fog. Um, you can't think as well, maybe not sleep as well, how it affects neurotransmitters, is uh, the vagus nerve connects directly to the brain. And so whenever we get inflammation in the gut, um, it sends a signal to the brain, and the brain stimulates its uh, immune response. And that's the immune response to the brain. You're not necessarily always like headache if you have immune response, but you actually get brain fog. And that can be a, a major cause to where you, you just have trouble concentrating or focusing. Um, on different things like that. Uh, you, you talked about things with uh, ADHD-type symptoms. Well, just like it causes leaky gut, uh, which means that your the holes that allow things to flow into the bloodstream are getting larger, so you're letting things in before you're supposed to, you have a, something called a blood-brain barrier, and that keeps things from passing into the area of the brain. But if you damage that, just like you damage the intestinal tract from gluten, that can allow other problems to get into the brain area, again causing, um, one, inflammation, but two, your gut makes a lot of different neurotransmitters like serotonin. Uh, and so whenever that starts to leak up there into the brain, you, now you're getting neurotransmitter changes in the brain because of, of damage in the gut. So there's these are some of the big connections that we're definitely going to talk about um, uh, during our uh, Ageless Health seminar you've been talking about. Me and, and a couple of other of the doctors will be speaking more detail about how that affects the brain. But there's just so many aspects of, of how it causes problems in the body. You know, and we don't know. There's so many hidden areas that gluten is in. I mean, those those people who enjoy a glass of wine, red wine, we unfortunately are using gluten to seal the wine cask, the individual boards. They're, it's a glue, and they're using it to bind it because it won't leak. And But you're getting the gluten, uh, the, the gluten protein leaking into the wine, so people drink wine. And thinking that, you know, it's good for them. They're having a glass of wine with a meal. But meanwhile, they're, you know, they're puffing up and they end up feeling like they're drugged and they don't sleep well at nighttime and so forth. And all those things have to do with that exposure. The, uh, the things that we uh, use to filter sometimes have gluten in them. We don't clear uh, you know, the table, so to speak, when you get into manufacturing process. And if you're gluten sensitive, you're gluten sensitive and, and any kind of exposure on an ongoing basis, no matter how little or how much, is going to wreak havoc within that system. You know, let's talk about a subject, Dr. Matt, that uh, even medicine is finally getting its head around. And I mentioned it earlier in the program. We're seeing way more hypothyroid conditions than ever before. And they're saying that all hypothyroid, low-functioning thyroid problems, 60% to 70%, and we'll, you know, just for sake of argument, we'll say 60 to 65% of all hypothyroid presentations, uh, the literature is suggesting that are due to gluten sensitivities, that there are Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and the Hashimoto's thyroiditis is triggered by an immunological response, and they're pointing the finger at gluten. Yeah, because the gluten is causing your body to become hypersensitive and your immune system get triggered. And so now, the more often that happens, um, the more your body is going to 
that's a, that's a tough one to explain, but it's going to cause your immune system to become hypersensitive to a lot of different things. Now, gluten also can, when it gets in the bloodstream, it, you know, these things aren't just going to stay in one place. They're going to move around, and so they can move on and look very similar or harbor over around the thyroid, and so your body starts attacking it but attacking the thyroid with it. Um, and so that's a, a, a big problem. And any time your body is constantly under attack, it's going to cause your immune system, again, to be hypersensitive, and that causes other autoimmune things like Hashimoto's or even things like rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease or things like that. So what they're finding is people who are uh, positive for Hashimoto's or have an autoimmune to the thyroid, anytime they consume gluten, it's going to increase the activity of those antibodies. So basically, whenever you eat gluten, your body is going to cause a counterattack or a major attack on your thyroid each time. Um, you mentioned something with uh, medical products. It's interesting because Synthroid, uh, one of the things with Synthroid is it's not necessarily a gluten-free. They use they have some gluten in some of the uh, processing, uh, maybe the capsule or something. So you've got people taking Synthroid, which most doctors think to give with Hashimoto's, which we've discussed here before that's not the case because it's Hashimoto's is not a thyroid problem, it's an immune problem. And now you're taking something on a regular basis that is also triggering an immune response to your thyroid. And if you're corn sensitive at all, and again, sensitivity or allergic, uh, you can't take Synthroid because it's derivative from corn. Yeah, both of them. So, and so you, you've got to catch 22. It's not okay. 888-630-9625. That's how you find us here. And if you'd like to attend the Gluten Challenge presentation this Wednesday evening, all you got to do is give us a call, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And join us, and I promise you, you're going to learn a whole lot about how to fix some of this stuff. And this afternoon, for those of you who are out and about, join me over at the Fairview Park Marriott Hotel in Falls Church, Virginia at 1.30 sharp. I'll be flying out of here and going over there. And I'm going to talk about the emotional side of healing and why you sometimes can't get your head around doing the things that you need to be doing the right way. And it's an interesting program. Let's uh, let's get back, uh, Dr. Matt, and talk a little bit more about this gluten pattern and you know, we talked that there's there's several different types of, of uh, gluten proteins and uh, antibody reactions and so forth. We talked a little bit. What is the difference between, in your opinion, between something that is allergic and something that is sensitive? Um, allergic, you're going to have an immediate uh, destructive allergic reaction. Uh, that, that's what they find with celiac, where it's going to basically destroy the intestinal tract and the villi, and then sensitive, you're going to have a lot of symptoms that are similar, but not have the amount of destruction in the gut. So um, it, from studies that have shown it's more about gut destruction with, you know, when it comes to celiac being the immune response. So sensitivity, you're going to have a lot of other symptoms. The problem is, is the symptoms were... If you have symptoms, that means you have further problems going on. And so I, I think that people get too caught up in uh, allergy versus sensitivity because it's, it's almost the same thing, just allergy is a lot worse. One of the things that I see a lot of is the relationship between the intestinal tract and other areas that are associated with it. We know that the lung and the respiratory system is associated to the intestinal system. And so patients who have chronic sinus infections, sinus problems, can't swallow, uh, they, they're constantly coughing. They eat something, then they cough or they sniffle or they're pulling, you know, doing that uh, kind of, you know, ugliness. And those are sensitivity reactions that are deep bred. They, it's a triggering mechanism. And you know, it's, it's tough for some people. We get caught in lifestyle. We get caught in a paradigm of, what do you mean I can't have this stuff? And because they were told that it was good for them at one point or another in their lives. And we can go through all the foods. But in this particular situation, in gluten reactive patterns, it can cause far-reaching irritations. You talked about the inflammatory reaction and how it affects the brain. 
because the gut and the brain work together. It's gut-brain barrier. It's a second brain in, in uh, much of the literature. So when the gut is inflamed and the antibody reactions are going on distally, meaning away from the gut, you've got all of these impairments, if you will, that are associated with that product. I call them you know, uh, low-level or predisposed allergic reactions other than sensitivities, but the, the patient is sensitive, and there's many ways of uh, following up on that. And we, just, and we see so many people in our practice who sometimes just cut gluten out, by itself, and their pain level drops 80%. Their range of motion improves. It's just a structural thing. Their their brain fog improves. Their allergies improve. And just by cutting it out, um, not because they had a specific blood test that told them that they were allergic, but because we know that it causes problems, they cut it out completely, and boom, things got a lot better. Uh, that tells you something right there that, uh, you know, Maybe the blood test couldn't tell you that you know that you can feel for yourself and you can see for yourself. You know, a lot of times I'll tell patients, you want to try something on your own. It's uh, it's really straightforward. Do this. You know, don't do anything for 30 days ex- except baked or broiled uh, fish, chicken, uh, beef, lamb, no pork, uh, and bake or broil them only, and only eat small amounts of them. Make sure they're free range vegetables. Tons of vegetables, but make sure they're organic, and don't eat anything else. But eat as much of that as you want, as much as you you want. But make sure you're eating all day long, so you're keeping your blood sugars balanced. Let me know how you feel 30 days from now. And like you said, all of a sudden, oh my God, things start clearing up. But you got to do it. You got to do it for 30 days. Um, that's the problem. Is is people have a hard time? You know, I, I hear, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much gluten free. And I'm like, what does pretty much mean? Well, I have a here and there, you know, yeah, well, I might have a piece of bread this day or, well, it's, it stays in your system. So you're not really. 10 days. Yeah, at least. I mean, an IgG response, which is actual antibody, it can be one to 24 days for it to react. So you can eat something and you may have some kind of response to it from an IgG response 20 days later and you didn't. You're like, why am I feeling this way? What did I eat yesterday? Well, it's what you ate, you know, three weeks ago. You know, it's a funny thing. We've talked about it before when we do grand rounds. And, you know, I've been at this game now, you know, going into my 40th year coming up pretty quickly. And I make the comment, when I started out in practice, you know, as my son would say, when the dinosaurs ruled the earth, you know, the patients were easier to treat neurologically and structurally than they are today. They responded faster at all age groups. And the reason I can only extrapolate and that we've talked about uh, is that so much has changed relative to our environmental exposures, our food sources, uh, things that we've done to our foods, uh, our, living in the Washington metropolitan area, the stresses that we have on a day-to-day basis. All those things are different today than they were before. We live in a, in a society that everything is right now. It's reactive. You know, if, if I didn't have it 10 minutes ago, it's, you know, it, it was too late. And these are the things that we're, we're seeing. Patients are sicker today, but unfortunately, health is a do-it-yourself program. It's one that, with the help of Big Pharma and with the help of uh, all the uh, food manufacturers out there wanting to you know, manipulate our foods, like Monsanto and their friends, uh, we're seeing foods that aren't, fed, uh, aren't fit to, to give to an animal we don't care about, let alone give them to our children and our families and so forth. It's, it's not okay. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Matthew Adams will be your host, your presenter at the Rizal Center for Healing. He's going to be talking about the gluten challenge and why all of these things come about and what you can do about them. That's the important thing. What can you do about them and really fix it? It's important. Call our office at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Be our guest. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to consult with you. Your health is our primary consideration. We'll be right back. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of soft-touch dental care and Dr. Michael Chung. 
Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live, same place on the dial every Sunday. You call us here at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. And how you register for Dr. Matt Adams' program on the Gluten Challenge this Wednesday, the 30th of the month. 7.30 p.m. at the Brazil Center for Healing's office in Fairfax. We're right off the National Capital Beltway. I mean, literally right off of it, probably a third of a mile. In the Red Cross building, as you call, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And this afternoon, if you'd like to join me on the emotional side of healing, I'll be at the Fairview Park Marriott Hotel in exactly 35 minutes. So that's going to be a real challenge. So make sure that you're there. I'll meet you there. We'll have a conversation. We'll talk. And I'm going to teach you what happens when your brain gets in the way, actually when your mind gets in the way of your healing. Matt, thank you for calling. Appreciate it. Uh, hi, Dr. Rizal. How can I help uh, you, sir? A little bit off topic here. I waited till towards the end of the hour to call in. Uh, calling on behalf of my mother, 90 years old. Uh, over the past three or four years, she's had a history of once a year or so retaining water in her ankles. Uh, the past three years, she was prescribed water pills, diuretics, and would combine with moderating her diet, paying attention to salt, uh, seemed to take care of it. Uh, she started up again three or four weeks ago. Uh, they put her back on the water pills. This time, they haven't, hasn't worked. So the doctor, her primary care, <coughs> ordered blood work. Well, I guess it was last Tuesday, and finally came back Friday. And without much explanation, said, "I want you. I'm giving you a referral. I want you to see a vascular surgeon." So she's, uh, she said, "Stop using the water pills. I want you to use compression socks in the meantime." Uh, which she's having a lot of difficulty with. Okay. And so let me give, consider let me, this from a conventional uh, medical standpoint, what, what direction you think they're trying to point her? Okay, and, let me, let me uh, I've only got a couple minutes, so sure. let me get into it real quick with you. I wish you had called earlier. I would have liked to explore this. They're talking about cardiovascular problems. Anytime the ankles swell, at that, particularly in that age group or even younger, if you can push your finger into the swelling and it kind of leaves a pit, it's called pitting edema, and at that age, it's often a result of uh, cardiac failure. And it just means that the heart pump is not pushing the way it's supposed to. That's one cause. Second cause is that the you, she's dehydrated. She's not getting enough water. Think about a pipe. And if a pipe is laying there and there's no water running through it, the water that is in the pipe, like in a sewer pipe or whatever, lays low and it just kind of stagnates. Yeah. That can happen in our body as well. If we don't have enough water, it's going to stagnate at the lowest level, and that's at the feet. The other piece is the uh, the lymphatic system itself that drains fluid, that uh, takes toxin out, can be compromised. Coenzyme Q10, but a good source of CoQ10 is often one of the things that, that is uh, prescribed for cardiac problems, the, uh, another, but a very high dosage, about 600 milligrams a day. The vitamin E succinate form is used by many functional cardiologists for that type of problem as well. B-complex, vitamin B, but a good low level, not a high level, is also used by many functional cardiologists uh, to do this. And you can see things turn around. But there's, you know, even from a functional medicine point of view, if it was my mother, uh, there would be some dietary intervention. There would be a lot of new nutritional uh, patterns, we'd be doing some acupuncture, that sort of thing. Matt, um, give me, uh, send me a note at drtomrozell.com, that's D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E.com, and I'll tell you specifically what I would do. Thanks for your call, Matt. I appreciate it. Dr. Matt, quickly, 20 seconds, why should they show up? They should show up to say, <laughs> know what gluten is doing to them, and uh, the challenge is how to live without it. 
And my challenge is to help them understand how bad it is for them and what we can do to help. Join Dr. Matt this Wednesday evening at the Rizal Center for Healing and join me this afternoon at the Marriott Hotel in Falls Church, Virginia. I'm going to be there in exactly 32 minutes. I'll see you there. Bye. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest X-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Thank you. 